Hey everyone, I'm Game Dev with Drew, and today I'm going to be showing you the first video that I'm going to be creating on this channel. My previous channel was known as Massive Breaker, and I will be migrating all of my YouTube videos that I have made for game development onto here because I really just want to teach people how to create video games and program. So, the main focus of this channel is mostly going to be on Godot. Godot is great. I, I learned it a couple months ago, and I feel like it's one of the greatest engines that is made. Unity and Unreal Engine 5 are amazing, but I feel as if Godot is a great entrance into game development and has the lowest learning curve, but you can do so many good things with it, both 3D and 2D. The first thing that we're going to want to do is go to GodotEngine.org. And up here, you can see that there are patrons, and they're donating a lot of money to keep this thing running. Godot is a open source uh, game engine, and you are allowed to use whatever you want, and you can even edit the engine if you want. So we're going to press the download button right here, and then you're going to press the 64-bit version or 32, depending on what's on your computer. And we're not going to be using the C Sharp support because I don't program in C Sharp typically. I don't really like it. Uh, more of a C++ person myself. And if you open this right here, you'll see that all you have is this Godot application. So you can drag that into wherever you want, and then you can open it, and that's it. That's how you have Godot. That's how you, that's how you make a Godot game. So, now that you have the project manager open, you'll have nothing here, but I have I have two things here. This is just stuff that I've been working on. I have a game that I'm, I worked on in the description. And I'm just going to go around uh, the Godot interface with you guys today. So, over here, you can see new project. So, let's just press new project. And let's do game dev with Drew. So I recommend creating your project and then putting it in a place called Godot Projects and then pressing Create Folder because it's really great and it's just something that you can, e it's easily accessible and you can open it straight from that folder. Just make sure to remember where that folder is, okay guys? Just cre press Create and Edit. And look how quick it opened. Godot is an amazing engine. So there's both a 2D and a 3D uh, viewport right here. And today, I'm just going to be showing you around the entire interface. And next episode, I'm going to be creating a 2D game with you guys. So, on the way left, you see these things called scenes. A scene is not what you think it is. So, a scene can be anything from a character to a button to anything. So, press the 2D up here, and we're just going to be making a 2D scene right here. Now, it creates this thing called a node. A node is basically just like an object that can be stored within a in the in your game that has a var that has variables, scripts, and other things. So we're just gonna rename this as our main scene, and we're gonna save it, and we're gonna save it as our main scene. And make sure to make some folders um, to hold things, or else you're gonna you're gonna get very uh, disorganized. So now that you we made main scene, we can run the game and make sure to press select current because no main scene has been defined, but we're but since this is gonna be our main scene, we can just press select current. And look at that. We already have our game. Nothing's really in this game, so we're gonna add things to it. So what I'm gonna show you guys is just a just different things that we can do. See, if we look at res over here, we can press open in file manager. And then it opens up the entire file manager and just shows what is in here. This is the Godot file, the project that you can just double click and open. And I already have another Godot instance in here. So let's just quit out of that. Over here is the icon of the game, which can be shown uh, right here, which is right here. And then Right here is just the default environment. That's basically what all of your settings for the editor are stored in. 
and then here we've made our scenes that's very self-explanatory and this dot import is just where Godot stores all of our different um, assets uh, for it to be able to read them all right now all right now since we know what the file system is uh, it actually updates in real time so I'm just gonna drag in a tile set in here just random things it's just a PNG file and look at that it's already loaded in and you can see it on this right side so with this um, I'm actually going to be just dragging it on here and you can resize it and you can do whatever you want with it so as you can see there's just many different sprites in here but and it created a new thing called a sprite so now that we're looking over here let's go into the inspector of the specific sprite so the texture is just literally what this P png is a normal map just allows you to put in better detail so you don't even need to worry about that under here is offset and you can literally just change the offset 30 and it goes 30 to the right or negative 100 and it goes negative 100 pixels to the left that is different from your transform which is down here animation which isn't really uh, needed in this region um, it's just you you're just uh, defining what region is available in your um, what is in your region so if you go down here you can see your texture region and say you want to scroll in and choose something from this texture you can just choose that and now that is my sprite so region doesn't really matter right now that's very important when it comes to sprite sheets down here is our transform and you can just spin your thing around and do whatever you want with it or you can change the scale of it 32 size that's pretty big so that's all good z index this is just what visibility very self-explanatory you can modulate it to be whatever type of color you want if you want something to be like you know dark and spooky or whatever or red and bloody as well as you can change the alpha which is just the opacity or transparency self-modulate literally the same thing in this situation and then light mask we don't have to worry about light masks right now material is something that we can get into later as well there's a couple more things uh, on the camera so if you want to zoom in right here you can press different things up here so this one is just to, is just a move around tool this one this button is a rotation tool this is a resize tool this is just a tool that shows uh, positions of objects that are placed it's very not useful I'm gonna be honest with you this changes the rotation pivot so if I were to move this over here and then rotate it again it now rotates along that axis rather than along the central axis because say I were to move it up here now turns on turns all the way up here this is literally a pixel measurer it's very useful see so yeah, I need to I need to know how how tall this uh, this bear is oh it's f about 40 pixels um, at, with a hypotenuse and it's about a, at an angle of 10 degrees it seems uh, let's actually make this uh, yep see 10 degrees put this back to normal and let's measure this polar bear it's about 38 pixels tall up here is smart snapping um, it basically snaps onto different uh, blocks as you can see see if you put on this grid snap you can just move it along this grid and this uh, texture is not according to the size of uh, what the grid is. 
but now it is so we're perfect we're good here and now it snaps along the grid perfectly right here is just locking the selected object in place i can no longer move it now i unlock it here make sure that the children are not selectable but th this object has no children so it's fine and this is just the bones. See, bones are something that are very uh, advanced and we will get into in another episode. Here's just the views, the viewport that you can choose. Uh, so let's just turn off these two things because I don't like looking at them. So now that we have our image, uh, I'll put the image in, in the, the bottom, by the way, if you want to if you want to experiment with the image on your own, if you want to experiment with the region on your own, it's really cool to work with the region. Uh, see, because you can just get whatever you want, and I have just a Yeti now. So I'm just going to put this image in the description so you guys can mess around with it um, and play around, and you can really do whatever you want in this engine. But next episode, I will be showing you guys how to make um, one of these characters in the sprite sheet move around, and really, that's it. Thank you all for watching uh, make sure to subscribe and we're going to be getting into the movement of our character next episode thank you everyone